Sorry, I introduce myself. I'm Dr. Sanjay Reddy from Bangalore. Uh, I practice diabetes for a living. So um, the next topic for today is non-critical management of <coughs> patients, inpatient management. So it's a workshop. So what I will do is I'll try to keep it as interactive as possible, unlike the unlike the uh, earlier talk. Just give the present. Unlike the earlier talk, which was on OHAs, here it's more on injectable therapy. I self-invited myself onto the dais. Uh, this is an industry-sponsored symposium. Uh, and uh, this is my conflict of in interest. I'm, this symposium is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. So what, you, I, uh, what we'll do is, please pass on some mics. So there's some certain questions, and we'll, we'll keep it interactive as a workshop. We will take it to a couple of case scenarios. We are all aware that once a patient gets admitted to the hospital, the management is different. Critical, I'm not talking about critical care. In critical care, we know it's IV infusion, patients are on many things. Non-critical care, meaning to say patients are in the wards. How do we manage hyperglycemia there? So this is the whole uh, story. So what we do is we start with case one. A 54-year-old lady who's 154 centimeters in height, RBS is 75 kgs, RBS is 325. Both parents died due to diabetes complication. A1C 8.2 on metformin, 100 milligrams OD, uh, twice a day. Admitted for cholecystectomy, started on antibiotics. Whole. What should be done for hyperglycemia? IV insulin, she's posted for surgery. A common scenario which you get in because none of them are your patients. They're admitted, and I get to see them as a cross-consult to manage hyperglycemia. What do you do? IV insulin, base bolus regime, or sliding scale? How many of you want to give IV insulin? How many for basal bolus regime? A show of hands, please. Okay. Sliding scale? Okay. There we have. We have a couple of them saying sliding scale, and a couple of them saying basal bolus. So I'm going to take the myth out of it. Now we know to maintain targets, to maintain targets, the target for anybody admitted with non-critical illness in a hospital is between 140 to 180. We had all the studies which were there early years. We've seen all of them. And 110 to 140 is the range where you want for the first two days in special settings, especially for patients with who undergo CABG. Patients who undergo CABG, the first two days, they are in the ICU. There you want 110 to 140. So here, this patient is in the ward. So no IV insulin is required. You can, and we'll see the answer. It is basal bolus regime. You should not use sliding scale. Basal bolus with correctional dose is the answer. I know why this happens. The sliding scale insulin is something where you're treating when the sugars are high and not giving any insulin when the sugars are normal. So what happens is you slide the patient. You, it is a reactive approach. You need to be proactive to make sure you keep the glucose well under control. So if you look at the changes in this slide, Target glycemia will be achieved. The target is 140, less than between 140 to 180. You is better achieved with basal bolus than sliding scale. Please do not use any more sliding scale in your practice. It doesn't work. What you need to do is you can use correctional dose. First of all, sliding scale insulin is non-physiological. You're giving only when there is hyperglycemia. Poor, poorer glycemic control and increased risk of hypoglycemia, promotes glucose roller coaster and cannot predict insulin dosage requirements, not individualized and reactive approach, which should not be practiced. If you do a basal bolus regime, you'll do better. Now, I see this often mistake. Majority of uh, them still start using sliding scale. Really doesn't work, believe me. Now, the other component which you need to understand is 
basal bolus is the most physiological way of giving insulin but most importantly you should train your staff there is a change in nursing staff every time for example i'll tell you if the sugars are 19 in the morning he won't give the short acting insulin the 90 as sir to tell them basal bolus uh, sliding scale there's a fixed dose the fixed dose is if you don't give at that point of time real and sugars will be very high only then you will give so if you are proactive you would have if you do a basal bolus for this patient then all gly the glycemia is better addressed so it's a physiological glycemic control ada recommends basal bolus basal is the fasting state insulin requirement bolus meal time requirement and a correction dose so for example i'll show you how to add up a correctional dose there and implementing basal bolus therapy to manage in patient hyperglycemia in non critically ill patients will improve glycemic control pure hyperglycemia and hypoglycemic episodes now we move on with the story what happened she was started on sliding scale insulin pre operative glucose 190 the glucose is 236 not in targets you can ask me a question what is going to happen sir a hospital stay will increase chances of infections may be more the surgeons have a very good very good thing if the glucose something goes wrong with the surgery and something happens the glucose is are not we have a audit in our hospital any patient who develops a sepsis is taken for an audit the first thing they check is the diabetic chart how good a glucose was immaterial what her a1c was prior to admission nobody is going to look at it whatever is the a1c you're going to operate right you can't ask the patient to come back after 2 months until it is a very elective one where you like knee replacement where you want strict pre operative a1c so that the outcomes are better if a patient for cabg a1c of 12 i don't send them back whatever the glucose is you have that 48 hours not even 48 hours sometimes so 24 hours time how do you manage it that happens only if you do basal bolus with a correctional dose so and the other important thing she was discharged on oads do you think it's the right thing a week later she comes back to the emergency department blood glucose is of 402 admitted to the hospital an endocrinologist sees her started on basal bolus regime she stayed for 4 days a thousand and a diet was corrected she was discharged on basal bolus insulin now she resumed normal activity and followed a suggested meal plan she experiences re repeated hypoglycemia and repeated to and went to a primary care physician what he does he discontinued the insulin put back her on metformin see most of the patients who get admitted to the hospital as i told you are not your primary patients very few are your primary patients they referred from somebody else they go back there if you if that primary physician doesn't know the basic of it now she was on so basal bolus insulin he puts her back on metformin just because she went into hypoglycemia what does it tell tell that on discharge we have not educated the patient what to do we are not asked about monitoring the many things to discuss so which i will dis discuss during the discharge planning what how do you discharge a patient based on the pre hba1c level when they are admitted she discontinued and the metformin to 500 twice a day three weeks later she is again reviewed by the endocrinologist blood sugars are between 160 and 280 they are high she explained why she stopped the insulin a metformin dose was increased to 1000 bd she was she was told she may still need resume insulin now was it right to put the patient on sliding scale insulin prior to procedure yes or no no so one learning point no more sliding scale when the patient was readmitted with rbs of 402 was basal basal bolus the right choice this is debate what do you think when you readmit the patient four days after surgery i think it's right how many how many of you want to disagree 
to no basal bolus sir i could have started on some other drug come on so this is debate you could see really whenever there is an admission the rule we start basal bolus it's easier to monitor control rather than doing anything else heroic 402 sugars maybe if the ketones are positive so let's discuss why did the patient develop hypoglycemia post discharge a discharge dose of insulin was too high other factors such as increasing insulin sensitivity following infection may have contributed to her hypoglycemic group the most important thing is the dosage what you give sometimes is very inadequate sometimes it is very high the reason is you are treating the patient in a hospital where she's undergone a surgery stress infection so insulin resistance is very high as the recovery process starts and she starts going home she becomes mobile a diet pattern change then she the most important thing here make sure what we have a process is they monitor the blood glucose even at home three times till all of this process is settled and they call the hospital if the sugars are going after one more than 180 more than two times the it, it or somebody comes back after four four days so we readjust the dosage most important is educating the patient educating the patient alone is not important educating the patient attender and you have to find and educate the right attender so sometimes somebody else is with the patient he's educated he, he goes away it goes home sir i was not with the patient i don't know how to take the insulin i can can enumerate a numerable number of examples where things have gone wrong was discontinuing insulin post hypoglycemia the right decision by the primary care physician just because of two hypoglycemia yes no good the so one more learning point whenever there is basal bolus and you want to convert you should be very confident in what you're doing probably you can reduce the insulin to start reducing it to half explain that if you reach if you're getting hypoglycemia between morning and afternoon it's a short acting insulin in the morning afternoon and evening it's the, so you need to spend time with the patient and teach them what to do insulin should not should have been continuous and dose adjusted so two learning points one no sliding scale insulin always basal bolus regime and the third thing is educating the patient we will go about the discharge advice later we'll go to the second case 40 year old male hypertensive well controlled on amlodipine admitted in medicine ward for work up of pyrexia of unknown origin of 3 months duration appetite mildly reduced rbs on admission 150 what do you think what you should do 150 rbs sorry yeah right why so po is fine because of 150 see the uh, the reason why this is put up is whenever and blood glucose monitoring any patient coming to the hospital please remember this if the blood glucose is more than 140 at any period of time you should investigate further if you miss in patient admitted patients diagnosis of hyperglycemia the mortality of this patient is 2 1.5 times in the next 5 years even in so that it's mandatory that you, you tell if the sugars are one more than if like a fifth vital sign they come and you check the sugars is more than 140 please invest so what you should do is you should do both you should monitor blood glucose because when he is admitted the sometime a1c sir a1c 6.1 um uh, see admitted for cabg not a known diabetic when you look at his post uh, uh, surgery when we follow them up 200 250 400 so it's very important that you monitor his blood sugar for better outcome so both a and b the case continued is a1c 7.5 24 hours glucose values 160 200 220 240 that means he needs basal bolus therapy so you want to start a oral anti hyperglycemic sliding scale basal bolus regime start pre mixing insulin start only basal insulin what do you want to do basal bolus dictum rule basal bolus but there are so how do you calculate weight is 80 kg so you have 
calculator roughly 0.25 in between 0.25 and 5 depending on usually take in between 0.4 units per kg of water that is 32 units you have 32 units of requirement that's how you start off in 50 percent is basal another 50 percent divide by three short acting insulins or so what you do is you start this and add a correction dose. A correction dose is suppose morning blood glucose is 160. So 160, you have to add, you leave it 110 to 1, your target is between 100 to 180 or 140 to 180, everything is there within 180, you need not change. More than 180, the fixed dose, suppose you've written six units of short acting insulin, say as part, 666 six, six and four, we started day one and 16 units of a far long acting insulin, that is degludec. People who cannot afford, if you have a resource poor setting, you can, in, you can use NPH. Degludec earlier was saying, oh, we would take time for it to achieve uh, its effect, but now that myth is also solved. It acts 60 by this, uh, immediately, there is no doubt about it, 70% of its effect is reached within 24 hours, and the pace, you can give it any time of the day, it could not be night at all, so that's an advantage. And faster acting insulin last part. The reason why analogs would be taken afford are better is you need not time it half an hour before the meal. Meal will come sometime, sister will go somewhere, uh, half an hour before it just given before a meal. Our patient finishes the meal, insulin, uh, the base, bolus insulin is not given. So all these factors can be avoided if you use an analog and use a faster acting analog. And nothing like insulin, uh, faster acting insulin, uh, in analogs like Aspart. So what happens, day one you started on 664, day two, look at this blood glucose, on day, it, it was 250, so even it's 250 is not on target before lunch. What are you doing? You're adding plus four, six plus four, 10. Before dinner was 160, it's fine. So bedtime, 180, perfect, 16 units given. Let's see what happens the next day. <laughs> next day, Fixed plan is 664 and 18, but look at the sugars. 160, 220, 180. So because if you don't add the correction dose of insulin, you will not add. You have a fixed dose and a correction plan. Don't confuse this as a sliding scale. This is a corrective dose. Already on a fixed dose, you're adding a corrective dose. Day 8, 8, 6, 4, and this sugars, most of it, is under, it doesn't look like this as textbook, but anyway, what it is. You have this patient well controlled on a basal bolus plan, though A1C was 7.1, blood glucose was 150, admitted for pyrexia of unknown origin, right? So the sugar, see, until you test, you won't know. You'll be surprised what the values could be depending on what they've eaten. So men, some of the merits of insulin is easy of daily titration, low glycemic variability, and better predictability. You can give it any time of the day. Flexibility in dosing. Safety. And you can use Deglodac whether they have renal failure, hepatic failure, any sort of failure. So that's another advantage to it. And it's predictable. If you're using NPH, NPH also you can use, or insulin glargine, whatever you want to use as basal insulin. Or if you cannot, if a patient can't afford, even act rapid, uh, rapid insulins are fine, shorter acting insulins. But remember to give it half an hour before the meal. And it's safety in a wide variety of population. Aspart is effective, safe, and offers better one hour PPG control and post meal flexibility. Safety in a wide variety of passion. So, op the objective of this structured discharge plan is very important. Most of the time, you don't know how, what you should, should you send all patients who are admitted on insulin back for everything? No. So, the idea is you don't want like a patient for the, patient had come for cholecystectomy, second, five days later comes, get, comes and get admitted for hyperglycemia. Imagine the cost, imagine the uh, an amount of uh, distress on the family, financially and everything else. If you do it right, this doesn't happen. Reduce admission rates, increase patient satisfaction. There should be a structured discharge plan tailored to each patient. So how the discharge planning includes are on many things. 
one is the educational status affordability patient and family competence psychological state social and religious beliefs comorbidity accessibility to healthcare now what we have is a, a plan in the hospital the sister will go patient is on basal bolus is given a chart he needs to check his blood sugar his targets are set then he has to contact to us there is a contact number listed in case if the sugars are going high we have different types of patients patients who are undergo knee replacement patients who post cabg the cardiac hospitals i leave see a lot of patients post uh, cabg and if the sugars are going high if the idea is the first two days you need to keep very tight control otherwise if there is one sternal infection imagine what is going to happen and i'm i'm the first person who will be called for whatever reason so first thing which we audited in in any hospital is pre admission after operation why so you need to think about all this and depending on the affordability of the patient you have every type of patient coming in teaching the right insulin technique if the patient is not able to take it teaching the attender teaching the right attender who's going to stay with the patient and the comorbidities explaining about hypoglycemia so on discharge review self management with the patient issue clear instructions you have to describe the prescribed drug instruct smbg they always are sent off if they don't have a glucometer they are recommended to buy one to check for the post operative days at home so that the sugars don't go high clear instruction regarding insulin treatment hypoglycemia discuss regarding bg targets required for good control and importance of regular follow up now what is this based on if the a1c is less than 8 pre discharge if you do if the a1c on admission is less than 8 and they are on a stable group of drugs and they are not contraindicated for anything is admitted continue the same drugs educate him and continue if it is more than 8 you feel you can intensify like for example 8.2 if you wanted to add something else to that lady yes intensify treatment with oids insulin no a1c is available good guy Uh, glycemic control look at the blood glucose see how they are then you would know that this patient probably had fairly viable people normally admitted have even see not more less than 9 very few people who get admitted to hospitals have even see less than 7 who are already on treatment because when they getting to hospital with various comorbidities so previously undiagnosed 6.5 to 7 lifestyle modification metformin follow up greater than 7 continue treatment with oids insulin as per guidelines stress hypoglycemia maintain follow up treatment and 5.7 to 6.5 treatment recommended for pre diabetes one of the important things which you need to know is a lot of residents don't take history of diabetes 10 years come back ask the patient what he is taking sir 30 units of declodank uh, atropid 10 20 14 he is already on a basal bolus regime plus some oids when you stop these oids you may also have to go back to these regimes or probably increase the dose or decrease it depending on his glucose monitor take prior history of what drug is taking use you an ideas how many the duration of diabetes comorbidities all determine this is just a guiding path to telling you don't use sliding scale insulin anybody admitted with more than 150 please investigate third thing how to plan ditch discharge advice for non critically ill patients so thank you very much